I spent a good amount of time researching before I bought these lenses, watching tons of YouTube videos, googling, reading in forums and so on. And the Siri website contains a lot of information, it's actually really good, but there are some important things that I think a beginner would be interested in. And some of these points are probably well known to more experienced anamorphic shooters than me, but since I'm a beginner and come from the photo lens world, I thought I'd share some insights. The first topic has been covered in a lot of other videos as well, and it's the closest focus distance. But it's a thing that needs to be mentioned. I don't know why Siri wouldn't write this in the specs on their website. That's actually what bothers me the most. I mean, it's not a secret since the closest focus distance is literally stamped into the lens, and the rest of the specs are very detailed, so I don't know why they left out that quite important detail. This is most noticeable on the 75mm, which has a closest focus distance of 1.2 meters, or about 4 feet. When you're using this lens, it becomes very apparent, but it's quite noticeable on the other focal lengths as well, which has 0.6 or 0.5. 0.85 meters as closest distance. So diopters or macro filters, close-up filters, whatever you want to call them, are something you want to complement with. I'm actually still waiting for mine. I have ordered just a cheap kit I found online uh, and then I'm gonna experiment a little bit and see if it affects the image quality and so on. But that's something to take into consideration. You're gonna need diopters if you want to go close with these lenses. The wider you go, the more pronounced the barrel distortion is. When I put the 24mm on my C70 for the first time and pointed the flashlight on my phone towards the lens, I noticed this right away. And this was something I hadn't even thought about and did not expect. Personally, I'm not a big fan of this barrel distortion due to the shape of the flares. I like the flares straight and horizontal, but that's something you're gonna have to deal with on wide focal lengths. The softness on large aperture openings is something I noticed on the 75mm in particular. On f1.8 the sharpness is not good, so for the 75mm lens, if possible, I would recommend to go up to at least f2.8 and you'll get a much sharper image. If possible, go even higher than that. At f4 things start to look okay and at f8 it's really sharp. The intensity of the flares increase the more overexposed the light source is that is causing the flare. Also, the characteristics and look of the flare differs depending on the type of light source that's causing it. My recommendation here is to use a single light source or maybe a maximum of two light sources if you have the possibility to control this because it can easily turn into flare overkill. An LED panel for example which consists of several small light sources is not recommended because this creates one flare for each light source and this can look super messy. So be aware that you need to have control over the backlight that hits the lens to not oversaturate the entire frame with blue flares. If you're new to anamorphic lenses like I am, uh, all of this de-squeezing stuff is also new because there's a whole lot of math involved when you're gonna edit anamorphic footage. Uh, you can do it in a few different ways and uh, sometimes when you start you know, doing all the math, sometimes it's just overwhelming. But there is an anamorphic ratio calculator online made by Tito Faradans, big thank you. Uh, there is a link in the description to uh, where you can try this out and just fill in all your data and then you get the numbers and the percentages that you have to enter when de-squeezing the footage. So this is very useful, so check that out. That was my five things to consider when getting into anamorphic lenses. If you found this useful, please give this video a thumbs up and maybe even a subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye!